I shouldn't have to make this video in 2018. Please view part one of why I don't use the n-word to hear about incidents where I have heard the n-word used or having called the n-word. It will help to understand part two. I got better things to call myself than a racial slur. I got better things to call myself than a racial slur. I got better things to call myself than a racial slur. Respect my ancestors and don't let that line blur. Switch the beat, switch the beat, switch the beat. Let's go. Call me brother, call me sister, call me ma'am, call me mister. You can't call me a tenderoni. You can't even call me homie. Call me on the phone But if you call me the n-word Then you'll hear the dial tone You can't endear me with other words Than a racial slur You can't endear me with other words Than a racial slur You can't endear me with other words Than a racial slur Respect my ancestors And don't let that line blur Change the beat During the times when racism was an acceptable part of society, respectable minorities, like myself, had to fight to prove that we weren't the N-word, coons, sambos, or other embarrassing caricatures of black people. I don't like using the word black to describe a whole range of people, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to use it just to simplify things and have everyone know what I'm saying because that is the common usage and the common term for a group of people, but I don't agree with it, but I'm just using it right now just to um, make this video simple and get to the point. So during the civil rights movement, Respectable minorities got a chance to come out from the shadows of racist caricatures and were able to establish a respectful image of black people. Now, it feels like it's back to square one when I, as a respectable minority, have to prove that I am not like the hood rat caricature that has come to be the mainstream representation of black people. The hood rat became acceptable because the hood rat doesn't pose a big threat to anyone but other minorities. Racism still exists in America and the hood rat comforts the racist. The hood rat is not likely to be smarter, better educated, or wealthier than most racists. Some hood rats have money, but the hood rat's manners set racists at ease because the racists could dismiss the hood rat's money as coming from entertainment, sports, or illegal crimes like selling drugs. Most racists feel comfortable limiting black people's accomplishments to these areas. Not all hood rats are dumb, but their environment often suppresses the full expression of any intelligence that they may have. The hood rats' violent tendencies are usually directed at other minorities, especially those of the same ethnicity, so they are of less or little threat to racists. The hood rat is seen as a person to pity, not envy. They are stereotyped as coming from poor neighborhoods, broken homes, go to bad schools, and are not easily offended by, tend to tolerate, or even accept racist behavior. Whereas respectable minorities are a threat because they tend to be educated, have a good income, attended decent schools, and could be smarter than some racists. That irritates most racists who like to think that they are better than minorities. The fact that most hood rats accept and profusely use the N-word is also comforting to racists. There are two main groups of people keeping the N-word in use and supporting a racist legacy. Racists and minorities who use the N-word. The best portrayal of what self-respecting minorities have to go through when it comes to the N-word is when a racist who called me the N-word lived on the same floor while hood rats who loudly and constantly used the N-word lived right across from the racist.
So when I told the racist off for using that word and called the landlord, hearing the hood rats constantly use that word made it seem as if I overreacted and decreased the severity of the racist incident. Using the N-word didn't make the N-word lose its power. It disempowered self-respecting minorities who fight against racism. Those minorities who choose to continue to use the N-word empowered the racists and made the word more acceptable. The main argument by minorities who use the N-word is that using it diminishes its power. Using it doesn't diminish its power. It just stops the outward hurt feeling it causes, but at some level, it must sting ethnicities who had very negative historical experiences with the word. It is a defeatist strategy for minorities, especially African Americans, to use the N-word. It comes across that the word can't be defeated or let go, so it has to become accepted or appropriated in some way. There must still be some pain there because some minorities can't let the word go. It still hurts some people and they are not responding to that hurt in a way that can stop it. Let it go. Stop using the N-word. The N-word is the brainchild of racists. Racists gave birth to the N-word and minorities need to stop adopting it. Another example is that a callus forms because a shoe doesn't fit. The callus doesn't stop the cause of the pain or the rubbing. It just helps you feel less hurt by the pain or rubbing. If the callus grows too big, then the discomfort comes back. So using and just accepting the N-word is not defeating it. You just become callous towards it. The N-word is a shoe that doesn't fit minorities, and there has been pressure for those who have dark skin to accept it. That word doesn't fit me, so I don't use it. That word doesn't hurt me personally, but its use irritates me because I think of those who had to suffer because of it and were willing to risk everything just to stop its usage. I want to respect their legacy and also join the efforts to eliminate the N-word from common use. I don't use the N-word and don't let anyone use it towards me, no matter their ethnicity. I do tend to think less of people who use the N-word and would stop associating with someone of any ethnicity who uses the N-word because using it says a lot about a person. It's also not fair that I have to deal with N-word incidents because some people in general think it's okay to use because some black people make it seem okay. The people who accept the N-word don't speak for me. You are not allowed to call me the N-word or use that word around me without me letting you know in some way that it is inappropriate. I overheard a conversation where an older European American female was talking to a Euro American male about the N word. She didn't use the whole word, but referred to it as the N word. I didn't hear the whole conversation, but heard her say something along the lines of, I don't know why it's such a big deal. They call themselves that all the time. That's what using the N word to so called disempower it has done. It does not disempower the word. It doesn't change the word's history. It doesn't change a racist's view of the word. It seems as if it has made it possible for racists to say, you see, you were overreacting and we were right. That's what we call them and that's what they call themselves. So, after many long years of some people who can be considered black using the word and even using it as a term of endearment, thinking that it won't give the word power, the results are in. You were wrong. All you did was make the word more acceptable and kept it in use. 
So much so that racists complain that they should be able to use it because, after all, they call themselves that. They, meaning people who can be considered black. It doesn't seem that racists will stop using it because black people do. You just took the civil rights movement back 10 steps times 1,000. The fact is that words do die. When a word dies, it becomes archaic. Many words, especially slang words, have come and gone. Why are you keeping the N word alive? Don't need to use the N word and I speak English properly. Don't need to sell drugs to get R E S P E C T.